Welcome, gentlemen. Chips are at the table and guns are in the safe. Now, we got a lovely night of poker ahead of us full of smoking and bourbon. So let's get started. Take a seat, Mr. Farnham. Let me introduce you. To my right, wearing gray boxes and weighing in at 140 pounds, the owner of Pink Vice, the largest meat market in all of Manhattan. In other words, a real son of a bitch. No offense to the women he exploits. Our reigning champion, Oswald Quince. A title I aim to keep, provided our new contender here doesn't interfere. Y'all are dealing with the worst player in Texas. You're just trying to make me overconfident, aren't you? The truth is that our friend Farnham owns the largest and, I dare say, most entertaining establishment in Texas. Really? So we're colleagues then? Yeah, you wish quits. He owns a casino. Damn. And it's not even in Austin or Dallas. It's actually in a little town called, uh, uh, yeah, what was it? Darn it. I, I looked it up the other day. It had a funny ring to it. I, I hate it when this happens. I thought they moved all Texan casinos to Vegas, where gambling is legal. You mean Ding Dong, Texas? <laughs> ding Dong! That's it. <laughs> Who'd ever think of a name like that? <laughs> well, casino or no casino, let's just hope he doesn't keep as many aces up his sleeve as the late Ventimiglia, huh? Amen. To my left, wearing brown boxes and weighing in at 396 pounds. Frank, show some respect, huh? The hospitality tycoon, Polly. Polly. No. Tycoon? I just own a small bar with pool tables. Clients drink close to nothing and play even less, but certain business transactions just couldn't happen anywhere else. Damn it, Polly. Why don't I know your last name? Because they took it away from me. You have no idea how good my ex-wife's lawyer is. <laughs> Women, they even take our damn names. <laughs> You're too much, Polly. When you're done sightseeing, why don't you drop by La Iguana for a game of pool? And I'll buy you a drink. But I have to warn you, my clientele isn't crazy about fairy fellas such as yourself. Thanks. I love me some pool. Perfect. It'll be my pleasure. You are looking to start your own pool business, Farnham? This guy here wants to start a boxing association in Texas. Guess who he's turning to for advice? To be honest, several things got me worried. So I'd be much obliged for any counseling. So, what worries you? Having to compete with illegal gamblers like that O'Leary fella. Oh, <laughs> one would almost think that you live in New York, my friend. That son of a bitch killed one of my men and left the poor bastard on my damn porch. But he's a goner now. Ever since the sport got put on TV, people want a fair game, honest boxes, and no shady business. You can't break the law anymore like before. Nowadays, they gotta bribe those big network executives to negotiate for broadcasting rights. Billy Bob, bring out the bourbon. We're drying up here. I'll deal with a fresh deck, of course. We respect traditions in this establishment. Poker is as boring as it is simple. All you need to do is read people's faces. And even the worst detective has that trick up his sleeve. The real issue is knowing what to play for when there's much more than just money at stake. Damn it! What again? How many games have you won, Farnham? The worst player in Texas, huh? Hey, Quince, you better start unbuckling that championship belt. <laughs> <laughs> this ain't over yet. Mark my words. Farnham will be calling his wife before the night is over. Ha!
Oh, hey, 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 by the way, did you guys hear about Kenny's wife? Pretty tragic, huh? What happened? Oh, plain bad luck. Hey, but Farnham, I'm, I'm sure you know more about it than I do. Anyway, Kenny, thanks for fixing the game with Cassidy. <laughs> God bless you, brother. <laughs> Craziest goddamn Texan in New York. And the poor fella's already got enough on his hands now that his wife. Women just gotta have their vices. They're, well, she's in a rehab clinic now, hooked on tranquilizers and all that. That's it, tranquilizers. Don't tell me women don't have their vices, too. Bring out the bourbon, Billy Bob. Come on. Come on. Give me, give me the Maybe I spoke too soon when I said that poker is easy for a good detective. Let's just say it's relatively simple. There's always someone ready to surprise you. Relatively speaking. Well, I'll be damned! I don't believe this! What happened, Farnham? Beginner's luck doesn't last forever. And that's when the real champ comes in. I hope you're ready to lose it all, my friend. <laughs> Poor Farnham. Came looking to make big bucks in the city with his boxing and he's gonna lose it all with polka. <laughs> I hope your counseling will make up for it. Mm. Yeah, so how can I be of help? Those there athletes hooking up with each other, like Al Stone and Helen Moore. I see you subscribe to What's News. Yeah, my star boxer, the reigning champion. He's having an affair with America's sweetheart. Hey, I got nothing against those two idiots falling in love. Don't get me wrong, but it's taking a toll on his performance. I don't think he'll lose against Yale, but I'm starting to worry a bit. You happy now? Sure thing. Although, there is something else. Come on, spit out. I want to play. Rebel coaches like Joe Dunn. Oh, I see you've done your homework. That bastard wouldn't accept the most basic rules. For example, banning boxers from official competitions when the managers don't belong to my association. Hey, don't get me wrong, I'm sorry for his death. But if they ever find the murderer, I'd be glad to pay his lawyer fees. Come on, come on, let's steal another hand before Quinn's accuses us of trying to break his winning streak. Ain't gonna happen. Gentlemen, I suggest you never tell your sons about this game, unless you want to lose their respect. Wait, you mean our sons actually respect us? <laughs> I hear you. There's no way to set boys straight these days. They don't even respond to a good old beating. I dare say Texan boys do respond to a good beating. Hey, careful, Quince. You're talking to a pro. So, uh, Kenny told me you had quite a hustle. How many kids you got in that house full of yours? No. That son of a bitch was about to choke on his own vomit. Sure, the sight of a millionaire choking on his own vomit had a certain poetic quality. Even so, I couldn't just stand there and watch him die. No, deserving or not, the man would live. Well, that's something. I don't know how you deal with all of that. All oh, boys, does it have to be now? Oh, never let Quince near one of your daughters. Come on, Polly. Children are sacred. I won't Cassidy. put a finger on them until they're 12. After that, well... 
Let's just say some men have needs that uh, can only be met by a young girl that age, <laughs> if you know what I mean. Are you all right, Farnham? That damn eagle represents the lowest scum of our society. There goes your winning streak, you sick bastard. Yes, I'm fine. Now, what if that lovely 12-year-old girl was your sweet little niece, or my cousin Mike's niece? And what if she disappeared a while back? And what if she'd been taken to work uptown? In a brothel, huh? Huh? Uh, what do you think about uh, that? I, I don't know what you're talking about, Frank. Don't you dare call me Frank. Billy Bob. It's 500 more. <laughs> For washing up. It's a deal. Sorry for the spectacle, fellas. I, uh, I had no idea the game would end like this. Please, uh, take my tokens, and that flying scumbag's tokens as well. Now I feel, excuse me, I have some family matters to attend to. If you decide to go ahead with your new venture, call me Farnham. Your behavior at last night's game was utterly insulting. Never contact me again or I'll put an end to your pathetic life. If our common acquaintance should ask you about your business endeavors, tell him that boxing is too violent for you. Signed, Frank Cassidy. tracks would be covered the following morning when Cassidy read this note from Farnham. Dear Mr. Cassidy, though I'm grateful for your kind help, last night's game made me realize that boxing is just too violent for a peaceful Texan like myself. I have decided to invest elsewhere. Yours sincerely, Howard M. Farnham II. Damn Texans. As for me, it was the first time in days that I had gone to bed without my daily bed. Oh, I'm a real shame. Nothing like a bruised body to help you to sleep like a baby. Maybe I should have given myself a beat.
likes that. It was like this when I got here. Did you call the police? No, only you. Good. Calm down. I'll take care of this. Had you already finished looking through these papers? I wish. Well, I guess you'll enjoy sorting all this again. Bingo. What is it? Nothing. Just a freshly signed contract. Not that I suspected otherwise, but it's obvious they weren't looking for money. Looks like the burglar isn't interested in bureaucracy. Did they take anything? No. Although... When you went in the hospital room to get your purse, did you get the gun as well? Yes. Isn't it there? I put it back. I'd rather not go through that again. That's too bad. It looks like they took it. What are you doing? Do you like sardines? Excuse me? Do you like sardines? Ugh. It's pretty clear that Helen Moore's cigarette case was a gift from O'Leary. If she's still in love, why does she claim she hates him? What is she hiding?
That cunning son of a bitch. O'Leary threatened Stone with ruining Moore's career so that he'll take a dive against Yale. Maybe O'Leary accidentally caused the death of Yale's father. So now he tries to make up for it by secretly helping advance his career? Who's is that? Mary Purnell. You think she did this?
Wait here, please. Could be a knife wound. The murder was brutal. Dear Sonia, I need to tell you several things, things about your father. In fact, I know he would have wanted me to tell you, among them the fact that you co-own an apartment in Manhattan. Please call me. Yours truly, Mary Purnell. If I were you, I wouldn't quit. Trust me. It might be painful at first, but time heals all wounds. Why did you listen to me? To a friend's house. Don't even think about going home and definitely don't come back here. I'm I'm staying at a friend's house. I haven't even set foot in my father's place yet. Good. Do you have the keys? If the murderer didn't find what he was looking for, that might be his next stop. If he hasn't been there yet. <laughs> <laughs> 